Hey guys, it's Stephen here, back with another video. And today it's time for a new series, The Lost Boys. I mean, I probably need a better title than that. But anyway, in a nutshell, I'm going to look back at some of the old Manchester City Academy players that we're all very excited about and work out where they went up to, where they went up to, where they went and what they got up to, uh, and see if their careers panned out how we hoped they would. But uh, basically, before I do that, I want to say thank you for The Athletic for partnering with my channel. Seriously, The Athletic have been absolute heroes on that front. It's a new home of football writing with a team of world class writers, including the likes of Rafa Honigstein. Michael Cox and our very own Sam Lee of course and you can get 50% off your annual subscription now and a 7 day free trial using the athletic.co.uk forward slash esteem company. If you want some great stuff to read to keep your sanity during this lockdown I can heartily recommend that there's loads of great articles there including this one uh, this really kind of shocking actually expose um, about the terrible state of the Premier League club's finances and how this pandemic in particular could have a really really negative effect on a lot of the clubs that we all just know and tell take for granted just being there and um, basically it's got this incredible quote here from a uh, farmed investor Warren Buffett who said only when the tide goes out that you learn who has been swimming naked and basically talks about how football actually now that kind of veil of luxury has been pulled back is actually potentially in a bit of trouble financially anyway go read that full article by signing up to the athletic and getting 50% off right now but today as I said we're going to talk about a bunch of players that we all hoped absolutely loads for and then worked out where they went and what they got up to um, because it's always fun to look back isn't it and work out uh, what happened to these talented young players um, history has been kinder on some uh, well time has been kinder on some than it has on others I'm going to start with one that I still think should be much much better than he actually is Marcus Ronnie Lopez um, I like this guy I like this an awful lot and also humble brag he follows me on Twitter still thank you Ronnie Lopez he's a lovely guy uh, with deep connections to Manchester City he's still really 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 cares about this club um he cares about his loads uh he seems to be really down with the fans he talks to the fans he seems like a really really nice guy and um, he's 24 now um it's worth remembering that this kid when he came through was really good he was really really good uh he became Manchester City's youngest ever goal scorer as well at 17 years and nine days scoring as a substitute against Watford off the bench came on the 88th minute I think and scored um, and then he kind of started uh, he kind of didn't really get involved for a while but then in January that year he did start the second leg of a semi-final uh, in the in the Carabao Cup was it the Carabao Cup then or was it something else either way it was in the League Cup um, and we were 6-0 six, six from the first leg but he started that and he got a couple of assists he was very good as a 17 year old in that game setting up Aguero and Negredo and I remember one of them vividly where he dribbled past a couple of people um, he was very good really really exciting young talent uh, we loan him I think uh, to Lille at one point he did pretty well on loan and then we had that famous kind of pre-season kind of shindig that City used to have um, and on stage they announced that he's now part of the first team alongside Kelechi, uh, Iheanacho and Jason Denier and then about two weeks later we sold him and it, at the time it was famous because, because Pellegrini said oh he's going nowhere and then we sold him basically more or less the next day which was just I was livid I was absolutely livid because he felt so so stupid Um yeah, I, I'll get on to what he could have been and where he should have been in a few more minutes but we sold him to Monaco Monaco then lowered him to Lille for a couple of seasons uh, his, his penultimate sorry his last season at Lille in particular was really good he had a pretty much a bit of a breakthrough where he became one of the best attacking players and then um, he had a breakthrough season at Monaco he scored 15 goals in 38 league games at Monaco and he got 12 assists along the way as well and became a really exciting attacker with loads of flair loads of goal threat and easily one of their best players the season after there was a bit of a disappointment there was some injury niggles and he couldn't really kind of recuperate that form he had initially and eventually he was sold to Sevilla in La Liga for 18 million which is for Sevilla is a big fee you know they don't really tend to spend much more than that so it was a big fee for them but he has struggled unfortunately uh, he's barely played any football in the Liga this season and he was linked to Newcastle in the summer but it didn't quite happen um it's a shame because he's, he's got loads of potential and loads of talent. He's only 24, so he's got time on his side. But I maintain that if we'd kept him around better players and we used him and nurtured him alongside the likes of, you know, David Silva and Kevin De Bruyne and Aguero and all that, he would have got better and better and better. Players' development isn't on a linear curve. It isn't set and it isn't going to just go straight up. It goes like that, like that, or like that, or like that, depending entirely on circumstance. And we have to consider the fact that I think we actually wronged Lopez. He was exciting. He was intelligent. He could beat people. He could score. Uh, and I think we basically sold him far too prematurely for nine million. It was ridiculous. Um, but you know, maybe maybe they're right. But I still think we should have made more of them. On to the next one. Um, Vladimir Weiss, oh, this guy has been around forever as well. I still remember watching Vladimir Weiss in the FA Youth Cup team and him being absolutely incredible. Like Vladimir Weiss was. 
Um, one of those guys who's ridiculously talented, but maybe didn't have the focus to really assert it at the highest level. I mean, he did do it every now and then. I think he um, did he scored in Champions League a wonder goal at one point. He did. I think pretty certain he did for Olympiakos. Um, but Vladi Weiss, uh, he's 30 now. He plays for Slovan Bratislava. He's had something of a nomadic career in general. Uh, he left Manchester City. Uh, I think he joined uh, Bolton alone initially, did pretty well there. Then he went alone to Rangers. Rangers fans really liked him for his ability to run past three or four people. I do remember, by the way, in one game where he kind of played and he linked up really well with Rubinho, I think. I remember that being a lot of fun. But anyway, went on loads to Espanol, did really well Espanol as well. Uh, they liked him quite a lot there. Eventually, he signed on a full-time basis for the newly promoted Serie A team, Pescara. Um... And he kind of did pretty well. He did okay there as well at Pescara. You know, they kind of semi-liked him. But he did turn down offers and eventually went to Olympiacos over uh, in the Super League. Um, scored plenty of goals for them. Well, scored six goals, actually, including uh, that one particular famous goal in the Champions League where he beat a whole bunch of people. Was it the Champions League? I feel like it was. Um, let me just double-check that. Uh, yes, it was against PSG, uh, and I think it was voted at that time as the UEFA you know, Champions League best goal of the match day. Yeah, it was. Yeah, he skipped past loads of challenges and scored a wonderful goal, which he was very capable of doing. And then he moved, and this is where he's been since to the Qatar Stars League to Lequia SC. Spent three seasons there before joining Al Garafa, where he's still at now and barely playing much football as it is at the moment. I actually scored. 10 goals in 2018-19. Um, he scored 5 in 7 in the season before that, but he had injuries, I think. Um, Vladi Weiss was one of those guys where you've got loads of talent, but not enough focus on how to um, make the most of his career. A really exciting player, but couldn't quite make it. Next on to Pablo Maffeo. I mean, he's on here, even though he's only still young, I guess. He's only 22, still young. Last man Left Manchester City officially a couple of seasons back. Um, we all liked Pablo Maffeo, an absolute warrior defensively. Uh, he had that incredible loan... Um, a Jerome that went really well for him. Uh, basically, where in the Liga he he made his uh, he made his name, I guess. He made three loans at three loans at Jerome actually, but he made his name where he marked Messi out of the game. Uh, I think Messi still did all right in that game, but Messi said he was the hardest opponent that he played against. Um, Mafeo is a really tenacious warrior. A lot of people thought that by now he'd actually probably you know challenging for the Spain squad because his trajectory was so so good. Um, but then he signed to VFB Stuttgart in the Bundesliga and it just didn't work out for him for whatever reason. He couldn't settle in Germany, and it happens sometimes when you're young and you go somewhere you're only 20 21 or whatever he was um sometimes it can be hard to adapt to a new country and a new style um he didn't quite work out for him he only played eight Bundesliga games with a lot of those be substitute appearances um and eventually he was loaned back to Girona uh, last season where he's been playing there now um it's been a weird one and he's back in the, the second tier of Spanish football now which is a bit of a shame like I feel like his career stalled a little bit because he's got so much potential. Another's got so much potential, which goes to show you, uh, circumstance and form can never be predicted. On to the next one, Denis Suarez, another that feels like he's been around forever, but he's only just 26. I guess his career has kind of been interesting, really. He probably would deem it quite successful, and I guess most people would kill to have a career like his, really, when you think about it, when you look at the clubs he's played for. Um, he started up City. Uh, I never was really a massive fan of Denis Suarez, really. When I watched the academy side, I always thought he was a bit soft. Uh, and I still maintain, many years later, he's still a bit soft. He was a very neat player, very technical, could see things, but he was always a little bit like, you know, a bit, eh, a bit soft. But either way, he was obviously incredibly talented, and he went back to Barcelona's B team in the Segunda Division, and he was good for them, played regularly, got uh, seven goals in 36 appearances, for eventually going to loan on loan, sorry, to Sevilla in La Liga, and he was a regular there as well, a uh, good squad regular before joining Villarreal permanently um, with an option of a buyback, which Barcelona uh, did later take. But he was one of Villarreal's best players, often playing as a number ten behind the striker, often playing out wide on the left, um, and he showed that he's got loads of talent. But he was still always just kind of not quite there, in my humble opinion, and that kind of proved to be when he went back to Barcelona. Um, he did only solitary La Liga. Sorry, he did only solitary Spain cap in 2016-17. But he was a bit of a squad player for Barcelona. Only really used when the likes of Iniesta, or whatever, didn't really need a game. And eventually his game time dipped and dipped and dipped at Barcelona before eventually he got that loan to Arsenal, which was a nothing loan, an absolute nothing loan really. And now he's at Celta, uh, well, he's kind of a regular at Celta as well. But he's just okay, you know. He's one of those good kind of Spanish playmakers, but who will never really be great in my humble opinion. He doesn't have that added aggression, that added. I don't know, something, something, a little bit of spark, but a decent career, you know, maybe not cut out for the highest of levels, but you can't argue with a career that's Barcelona, uh, Sevilla, uh, Villarreal, uh, Arsenal and Celtic, it's pretty decent, isn't it? Next, on to Kareem Rakik, a guy that a lot of people were very excited about, Manchester City signed him uh, um, in 2011 as someone 
with a massive reputation for Feyenoord. And this was a fast, strong, uh, big uh, centre-back, basically, that people had a lot, a lot of time for. Um, and I remember looking pretty decent as well in one of his first appearances for City. He got a, a loan to Portsmouth and then to Blackburn. The loans were kind of, you know, they are kind of okay. They didn't really, didn't return heads. He was played out of position from what I can recall in some of those games, often at left-back. And he made his name uh, at two loan spells for PSV uh, between 2013 and 2015. This is where, actually, I'm pretty certain he picked up his first Holland cap. He did, yeah, in 2014. He was pretty decent. I remember watching a lot of those games back then because I was paying a lot of attention to him. And even though he was quite decent, he still was pretty raw defensive, we're being honest. He was very much... um, very erratic. Uh, he looked decent sometimes, but it, it was a, a league that wasn't really known for great defensive qualities and still isn't known for great defensive qualities. Either way, he got a decent move then from PSV to Marseille in uh, over in France. Um, and he was a relative regular there as well for, until the second season where he started to drop off a little bit before signing for her for Berlin. Um, and I'm pretty certain that's where he's been since. He's in and out the team at Hertha Berlin, but he is playing once again at a pretty decent level. He hasn't really reached the kind of levels that many would hope for, and he hasn't really established himself in the Netherlands team either, but he's done okay, you know. He's all right. He's done all right. And finally, in this video, uh, a guy I can't believe he's only 27 years old. It feels like he's been around for absolutely ever. John Gadetti, the Swedish striker, um, who's had an incredibly nomadic career, right? God, I'm reading through his Wikipedia now, um, and I just remember all these random loan moves. Now, he was one that a lot of people were very excited about. He scored a shit ton for our academy sides, uh, genuinely scored so many goals, and a lot of people really wanted to see him uh, given a chance, basically, at Manchester City. And I'm pretty certain, actually, yeah, Wikipedia does say it, actually. Yeah, it was Sven Goran Eriksson actually signed it for Manchester City. Anyway, he made his solitary appearance in 2010. Before that, he had a loan to IF. Bromer Pajakana, can't pronounce that, a Swedish team. That's the one we actually signed him from. He scored a few goals for them. He also had a loan to Burnley where he scored a goal in the Championship. And then his big move uh, was a loan to Feyenoord in the area of his team where he scored 20 goals in 23 games. Quite a few penalties, but he was very good that season. Very good. Just picked up my camera again because I totally forgot something about Gadetti, which I read online after making this video. Uh, he actually got that rare illness from basically eating chicken. Now, during his time over in the area of his team when he was at the top of his career banging in goals, he actually got food poisoning after eating a bit of chicken at a party and got a rare virus from that, which basically means he couldn't even stand on his right leg. It nearly ruined his career full stop but at his biggest and best point he had that incredibly unfortunate uh, just bad luck basically um, and he's never really been quite the same after that so I guess his career is all about the context of that awful moment and that was just before he got that loan of Stoke um, as well um, really bad looking basically he scored 20 goals in 23 games and then that happened um, maybe that was the turning point for his career anyway back to the actual video um, but you got to bear in mind the context of his career after that unfortunately uh, that materialised in a loan to Stoke uh, which didn't really do anything. Uh, he scored he won no goals in the Premier League for Stoke and for eventually he went on loan to Celtic in Scotland, scored 15 goals in 35 games. That started really well from what I remember. Then he dipped a little bit in terms of form for signing to Celta Vigo, which is where most people remember him from. He scored a, a few a few goals, 12 and 43 in his first season, 9 in 42, then 1 in 10. So he started to dip. Started all right, then started to dip. A regular goal scorer, but not a great scorer by any, uh, by any means, really. He's the kind of guy who'd score like... You know, seven in ten, but then not then score one in the next twenty or something like that. That's the kind of goal scorer Gadetti was, which is very frustrating because he can never really kind of maintain it. Then he went to Alaves. We didn't really pull up any trees before finally being loaned to Hanover. Uh, in Germany. So he's been a kind of very mixed career for Gadetti. Uh, he's not really kind of fulfilled on his potential either, but a decent player. He scored plenty of goals. Well, some good goals, you know, but he's kind of been up and down. But anyway, that is it for today's kind of capture of where they are now for the, those those lost boys, basically. Let me know if you want to see another video of this kind. I can do a whole bunch of plays. I'd like to have... Oh, who, did, who else have I done? Um... Denier, Denier, Bruno Zuccolini, remember him, uh, Jose Pozo, maybe Ines and Al, people like that. If you like the series, let me know in the comments below if you want to see more. Go check out theathletic.co.uk forward slash esteem company to get 50% off your, uh, your annual subscription and a seven day trial. It's very much worth it, I promise you. And thank you to all these guys here, the Patreons, patreon.com forward slash esteem company if you want to help me keep this channel alive. Because seriously, um, this is Patreons, my support now. That's it. No job, nothing else. The sponsor is about to end. This is the last day of sponsoring. And after that, I'm in, uh, that's it. So I'll, I'll get by. I'll get by. Hopefully I'll get by. Anyway, I'll see you later in a bit.